fortunately, in many parts of the state, uh, drilling has, in fact, uh, proceeded in a manner where the, while the costs are never zero, there, there is an impact. Uh, this is industrial activity, and it cannot be done without, without uh, cost. And then there is DEMIC, which is a, an absolute uh, case of how terribly wrong it has gone. Uh, and there, are, there have been other problems that have been very direct. Uh, there have been too many spills and too many leaks, uh, too much gas migrating. This is not the only place that gas has migrated. November 2nd, we're going to have an election, and things are going to change here, including the governor and your position. Can we have a commitment from you today and ask the governor to do the same, that an executive order will be signed, that I want this continued, I do not want it stalled, because many of the people running for elected office right now and that are in this position have taken quite a bit of money from the gas and oil industry. And I have to say, uh, no matter who the governor is, I cannot believe a governor of Pennsylvania will turn, it, turn the, his back on this situation. I understand the concern, and to be frank, uh, once in a while I think those that, that way too, but uh, we are in fact moving things rapidly, and I do, do really believe that, the, that the, what, what is right here is so clear that any governor is going to stand where we are standing today. Yes, yes Secretary, I'm sure you're aware that they have armed, armed guards coming to do testing with the cabinet people. Um, can you order them not to come and do any testing anymore? I understand the concern about armed guards, and let me say this to everybody involved. Everybody involved, put the guns away. Uh, this is not, we're in, we're in a church, it's a very appropriate place to be making this point. This, everybody has to do this through the law. Cabot has to follow the law. You have to follow the law. I understand the concern about, about guns. The emotions have been high. I understand that. But this has to be done in a peaceful, respectful manner. Can we do the families first, Josh? I know. You know, I'll, I'll stand in front of your camera. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dingees is uh, sitting in, in Houston, and I can tell him from here in Dimmick, Pennsylvania deserves better. <laughs> Last time I checked, uh, Mr. Dingees is not a 90 year old widow sitting in a nursing home who is incompetent to sign a legal document. <laughs> this governor, and this secretary. Right. Secretary Hang. All right, Josh. There, <laughs> there are significant reports of water contamination elsewhere in Pennsylvania. Does this mean that the Commonwealth is preparing to replace water everywhere that there's gas drilling and everywhere that there's contamination? Is the reason why some of these steps have not been taken, at least for the families along Cutter Road, is because of the lawsuit? The been? lawsuit is definitely an obstacle to getting this issue resolved. I'm the lawyer that's, I, I'm the lead attorney on the lawsuit, so as soon as this gentleman has closed his mouth, you can ask me any question and I can tell you about what, how Cabot has not cooperated in the entire pursuit of litigation since the case was filed. November 21, 2009. This gentleman is a Johnny-come-lately. Yeah. 
we'll we'll cap, 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 how we put the pieces together on this. This is news for us that this would be the final option. That's what we've been trying to find out from the secretary, what we would do for a solution in this effort. So now we want, again, we need to figure out how we have those conversations with the secretary now that we know his preferred option. We've been laying out options along the way. But you're not absolutely today ruling out that uh, Cabot will pay, uh, agree to pay for the water line. It's, it would be difficult for me right now to, to say that we will be agreeing to pay. It is our goal to lay out options that are available that we think won't take 18 months to restore the water. This may have already been asked, but as far as that full page ad, uh, it seemed as though it was kind of a taking aim at the DDT. Can you just at least address or readdress why, why that was taken out? It was laid out in the full page ad was a desire to educate and inform the public that has not heard that there are multiple sources of ways to solve this problem. And that's why the full page ad was taken out. It was not at, to take aim at anyone as it was to educate people there are several ways to solve the problem. But and did. that's what we're trying to do. But it did take aim at the DEG, and John Hanger <laughs> called him out by name. I mean, how can you say that it didn't take aim? It did. It took aim with the options that are being laid out, and we think there are several options that were not being fully addressed and fully given the evidence that they are there. We could lay it out and show this. There are several options. We wanted the public and the magic? secretary to know. That, that ad was pretty magic critical one. of Secretary yeah. Hanger and the DEP, I thought. Come up here. Address or no address, why sign the consent order if, if you don't believe that that's afterwards. what's right? I would stick with the statement that there was no right way. But even with your address, why would you, why would you legally sign that document? Good question. Oh, yeah, you stand with the directors. Why are you demonizing us local residents? If we speak up against it, we become the enemy. We're not the enemy. We're here to... Any more questions? <laughs> Thank you. We had a team of Napoli, Vern, Ripka, and myself stepping up the prosecution of this case as Cabot steps up and attempts to litigate in the press. And the press and the citizenry should take note of what's occurred in the last couple of days, particularly with respect to the audacity and the cynicism that they have exercised and exhibited in the 29-page letter, scathing, decrying letter that was sent to the governor as a desperate, last-ditch effort to derail a considered and courageous decision that the governor and the secretary made. This company has stymied these appellants and these plaintiffs from the very beginning, and they, they show no no interest in remediating the issue of criminalization you have to be looking at. You have to seriously. You know last week there was a Homeland Security a week and a half ago. That became a topic. Now we have clients who are have done nothing wrong for two years. Cabot has been testing their water. Suddenly it's necessary to have a military type person come onto their property with an arm, a firearm, a large firearm. This is still America. 